you know when you see a tight group of bros and they have a secret handshake? You're like, dang, that's cool. What is that secret handshake? I want in on that. Well, to be part of the Bulletproof for BJJ Brotherhood, to learn the secret handshake, you must click subscribe. We love you guys. We love delivering all the info and doing the work for you for free. But there's one thing that we need. We need you in our crew. We need you to help us get stronger by clicking subscribe. It helps us. It helps you. We cannot check if you do this. So this is kind of like a gentleman's agreement, but we want you to be part of the brotherhood. Click subscribe today. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Bulletproof for BJJ podcast. I am JT Tenasty, and I'm here with the amazing Joseph Worthington. Ah. What's up, fam? Thanks for being here. This is, uh, this is tough because this is almost counter. This, this, this topic is almost counter to everything we, we talk are about. Are we crushing our own business and our own podcast is this, this gonna, one? Are we going to just throw... Th- is this the final episode? It could be the end of Bulletproof for BJJ right now. Does Shh. our program suck? Oh, no, sorry. What do you... No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely doesn't. <laughs> Jeez. Should I quit... BJJ. This is a hard question. You probably should, let's be honest. Yeah, you got to ask yourself, am I any good? Should I quit? No, this is a serious question because this person reached out to me directly. They will remain nameless. They've only been training a bit over a year, but they said, I'm injured. I'm getting beaten by new people. People have trained not as long as me. I feel stuck. And also, I'm not having fun anymore. Like it's, it's become unfun i signed up to jujitsu because you get that froth and that excitement and oh this is so cool i'm learning cool shit and wow it's all new and different and within one year this person is now like they're not hating it but they're kind of dreading going to jujitsu because like oh when i go i get injured or i just cop beat downs and i'm not learning and there's all these aspects and i think we all experience this but um, depending on how long you've done jiu-jitsu and depending on how connected you feel to your gym, you might think, you know what? Fuck it. It's not worth it. And I know that I've definitely had severe injury moments that have made me go on, this isn't healthy. Like, maybe I should stop in the name of my health. And what I want to get into today or what, what I feel we're going to discuss is like, red flags and warning signs that might make you think you should quit but then also maybe there's solutions and maybe there's ways that you can navigate it so you don't necessarily need to quit per se as in stop jujitsu permanently and never do it again have you had you've had moments you had the quitting moments weekly yeah it, it occurs all the time yeah i mean often i was gonna say we did an episode way back which was um why blue belts quit yes which is a very popular episode. It was a great episode. Yes. And uh, it was, it's been very popular on YouTube and there's been so many comments. It obviously like pulled on a lot of hearts, like triggered a lot of people. It did. People were like, well, sometimes like not everyone wants to like do jujitsu forever. Like that, you know, like some people just want to do something else. I'm like, that's a really fair point. We didn't kind of mention that on the show because that's fucking boring. Like, <laughs> you know, sometimes you quit because you've just had enough. But it's, it's important. Great episode. Yeah, yeah. See you next week, guys. But it's important, I guess, to mention with this that sometimes, yeah, you should just quit. Like, you know, it's not, there is going to come a point where everyone stops, generally, mm. right? Like maybe, maybe not. Maybe you will keep training in some way until, you know, you pass on to the next plane of existence. But, um, but for most of us, there's going to be a point where you stop. And so, um, you know, let's go. I'm not trying to take away from the, the, the question, but... I think it's, yeah, like if you've kind of done it and you're like, that was good and, I, and I've had it, great, move on. Yes. But perhaps there's some other things at play that maybe you should stay in the game and maybe, it, maybe it's not a great idea to just act on that first instinct to quit. Yeah, and I, I think you've got to ask some questions. If you want uh, better results or different results, you need to ask different questions. So if the inputs stay the same, the outputs usually stay the same as well. So if you're getting injured, let's talk about the injury piece because we, we've both suffered pretty serious injuries and injuries that have taken us off the mats, but it didn't necessarily make us go, okay, I'm quitting jiu-jitsu now. It's just I physically can't do it right now. But as soon as I overcome whatever I can overcome, I'll drill or I'll, I'll find my way back to the mat. But some people 
are getting so injured that they can't live their lives. And we've talked about this before with people having a physical job. It's like, no, this is my income. This is how I feed my kids. It doesn't matter how much I love jiu-jitsu. I can't, I can't run my business and do jiu-jitsu if it means I can't, you know, yeah. earn money. So I, I think we've got to look close, look more closely at how the injury occurred. What are you doing? Um, was it situation specific or is it, is it more general? You know, did you warm up? Do you have a way of looking after your body? Was it a freak accident? It just happened. It's not as regular as it seems. Or if you are chronically injured, is there something that you could change which would remedy that? Whatever that might be. might be a bit more stretching. It might be a better warm-up. It might be a number of things. But maybe can you analyze what's going on? Because the hardest thing is you can't change something that you're not measuring or you're analyzing. It just is what it is. It's a black box. You have no information. But I think getting feedback about injuries is also important. Um, so for you, Joe, I mean, when you hurt your knee, it was very specific. It was very situational. But is there any other times when you feel discouraged by the kinks and kind of yeah, yeah. you get in jiu-jitsu? Absolutely, yeah. Like every, every, time I, every time I cop an injury, I'm like, damn, like this sucks. Yeah. Do I, is this worth it? Because is, is, I think there's a constant trade-off. And you may be not aware of this when you're, when you're a bit younger and you're really like, you know, you're just throwing yourself into it and everything's – and it's just learning, learning, getting better. But I think once you've been in the game for a little while, there's, there's probably a constant dialogue in your own mind about like, is this worth it? Do I enjoy it enough? Yeah, I do. Uh, maybe not. I look a little bit deeper. You know, is it me? Is it, th- is it the art? Like, it's just all that stuff being thrown around. Pros and cons. I, I, th- I have that thought crosses my mind often when I wake up the next morning after a hard training, you know, the yeah. day after, and I'm like, oh, man, I feel like an old man. Mm. You know, it's not a good vibe. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't want to feel like an old man. No. And then I think, well, how much longer am I going to put up with this? And then it's like, maybe I'll quit. And then I think, man, training was so fun yesterday, though. It's good, though. Fuck. And I'm learning some shit. And I'm, I'm actually getting, like, it's really, it's a really good test for me. And, Nah, I'll stick with it. Yeah. You know, like, you know, I'd be lying if I said that that, that conversation doesn't play, take place often. Does it come into your brain? Yeah. And there's so many upsides to jiu-jitsu. I think w- most of us think it's worth it. It's like I remember hearing a comedian talk about he wanted to try heroin because he was like, oh, sorry, it's crack. He's like, but it must be so good. You know, see that guy eating out of the bin? How good must crack be <laughs> to give up your wife, your kids, your home and be eating out of the bin? It must be amazing. Like, what's that good that you would give it all up? I feel like jujitsu is crack. Here's the crack cocaine of martial arts. Yeah. Because you see people who are just sucking being, dicks for stripes <laughs> on your belt. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you got any spare chains, man? Got these cheeseburgers, <laughs> man. <laughs> you know, like, you see that people. That Jules. Just taping, we make a highlight out of that. <laughs> <laughs> taping up their wrists and their elbows. And you're like, you're the mummy. You're, <laughs> you're being held together by strapping tape. And you're still here trying to get your fix. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, for some people, it is the best thing they got. And for a lot of us, it is. But I think for our friend who came in with the question, he's like, man, I can't, I can't keep living my life in chronic pain. It's not that, because he's only, he's about a year to 18 months in. He's, he's not indoctrinated enough. Yeah. The, but yeah, he hasn't, he doesn't have the sunk cost bias. He can step yeah. away. Which that's an important observation. Like for any of us, like, like say you're a brown belt. Yeah. Right? You're too deep. You're too deep. You're like, you can't get out. I fucking keep going. I it's like get Scientology. Back, right? I want to know who Zeno is. Yeah. <laughs> I want to believe in the aliens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think that's a really important thing, you know, to acknowledge that, that at a point you get kind of, fuck, now I've given it so much time and I'm close. I want to stay with it. Yeah. But say for old mate, yeah, I think like you can only control what you can control, right? And- so I think looking at it and, and objectively looking at like, well, how's my lifestyle? How am I looking after myself outside of jiu-jitsu? And am I putting myself in a good position to be able to enjoy this thing? Yeah. Or am I in fucking bad shape and I'm rolling too hard and I go too much and I don't sleep enough and I'm always fucking injured and now I'm complaining and I'm blaming it on jiu-jitsu? Mm. Well... No, actually, I should blame that on myself. Yeah, you're pointing in the mirror. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Like, I think that's an important conversation to have. The meme with the bike and the guy with the stick, it was like, 
Oh, yeah. You know, he puts the stick into. Yeah, it's yeah. like heavy lifting. Yeah, no, it's like on the bike. Yeah. It's got um, my BJJ is the guy on the bike. The bike is like, um, oh fuck, no, it's got me. The bike is jujitsu, and then the stick that he stuffs in the in the wheel is um, heavy lifting with no mobility. <laughs> it just jams it in there and falls over, and he's like, oh, I get injured because I'm old. <laughs> like, no, that's not it, right? And actually, funny. Uh, Shanji, I did a workout with Shanji on the weekend. Right on. And he, we had him on the podcast, total legend. Love Frothing. him. Love, love. He's the best. He's such a good dude. I'm, I'm, I'll fight anyone who says anything bad about Shanji. He's, <laughs> he's the man. Um, but that said, he's a jujitsu guy. As hardcore as it gets, jujitsu is everything. Jujitsu is life. He has a bad wrist. His left wrist is bad. He fell off a horse as a, a kind of young teen and broke his wrist and had to have it kind of reset. That's a legit injury. But that said, he doesn't do much for it now. You know, he's accepted that wrist is not as good as his other hand. Yeah. And so I said to him, oh, let, let me do some wrist mobility stuff with you. I'll, I'll post the video soon. And uh, we did it. And he was like, oh, that actually feels better. I should probably do that. And I'm like, yeah, bro, you fucking should. <laughs> You're like six-time world champion. You're not doing mobility on your wrist. What you doing, man? But it's because he can do really high-level jiu-jitsu and not worry about it. It's when it gets to the point that you can't deal with it anymore. You know, he's, you know, he's super high-level, super functioning, very athletic. The guy works out. It's not like he's not looking after himself. But you think someone that high up could be neglecting a thing then, you know, your man just Bob Jones, who's kind of not in shape, is probably like, yeah, no, I'm fine. I don't stretch, you know? Yeah. So the injury thing, I think we've got to ask a question, but then this also goes to the next thing, which is expectations. And, and Joe, you and I have talked about this before. It's like, what do you expect to get out of training? Are you coming expecting you're going to win every role and therefore you're getting disheartened when someone super young and athletic comes in and styles on you? That's kind of part of the game. Like age is just something you cannot, you, you can't negotiate that. Yeah, you can stay in shape, but it, it's very difficult. If you're 40 years old and you've got a 21-year-old, you know, footy player, ex-college wrestler coming in, you're going to get fucking smashed. <laughs> and that's okay. Like, Division one wrestler, <laughs> state champion, rugby Brock player, Lesnar's um, cousin. shot putter, heavyweight, <laughs> weightlifter, yeah. decided judo to, black belt. Yeah. Des- decided to do jiu-jitsu to just tone his lifestyle down. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, you're fucked. Yeah, and, and so I think expect managing your expectations of yourself and outcomes in class is really important. Yeah, yeah. I, I can think of so many like... Well, this almost touches on a little bit some of the business stuff we spoke about before. But like, I can think of guys that I've trained with who have started jiu-jitsu at an older age. Mm-hmm. So they'll have like 10 years on me, right? They'll be in their late 40s and they'll be a white belt and they'll be like going hard against me. And then they'll seem perplexed at like, like why they weren't able to make their game work on me or, sure. you know, how I was able to just, you know, whatever, control them or, you know, tap them fucking 75 times. <laughs> Learn your shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> better recognize, yes, right? I'm going to fucking put it on this old man. Watch this shit, bro. <laughs> Jules, Instagram me. Um, <laughs> I'll beat you with your walking cane. <laughs> but but it's like, it's like, dude, like, what, like, what, like, I mean, I get it, right? Like, it's like, oh, fuck, you kick my ass, whatever. Or like, oh, you're really tough to deal with or something. But it's like, sometimes in that you can see that they're actually surprised that, and that, that they weren't able to like use their strength against you. And you're like, dude, like, look at where the chips are stacked here. Like I got, you know, jits for 13 years, yeah. fucking lifetime of strength and mobility. And like, you don't have any of that. Yep. And you got the 10 years plus, yeah. but it's, the beauty of jiu-jitsu is that it can kind of make everyone be like, we're in this together and we're all battling and yep. fighting for it. But yeah, like the reality is, is that I will, like I, I, I'm i now at a point where I can see people who are younger and more athletic and want to go harder. And I'm like, fuck, this person's a real handful. Yeah. And I know that I'm not going to be able to match that in intensity forever. Sure. Right. So um, the expectations, like you said, have to, like 
you have to be aware of the differences of where you're at versus where someone else is at. And I'm not saying lower your expectations. That's that's not what I'm saying here. I'm, be realistic. I'm generally the person who's like, no, you need to elevate your expectations, lift yourself up. But in truth, if your intention is, I want to go in here, I want to be the best at my level, I want to learn faster than anyone, all this stuff, well, you better put the fucking time in. That's a competitive space to hang in. If you say, I want to be the best or i want to be the best in my gym or any kind of some such talk that's hard because if you own a business have family do all this and then you've got young julian living at home just doing bulletproof every day teaching kids class and training non-stop and just eating chicken and rice like there's no tomorrow bro bro, how are you going to compete with that a fucking macro diet that kid's going to kill you because you can't compete you haven't got the time to compete with that so you might recontextualize it and go, where do I sit in this order of things? How can I compete with myself? Am I getting better? Because here's the hardest thing. We always compare ourselves to other people. But are you better than you were a year ago? Invariably, yes. Otherwise, you wouldn't still be there. Ho- this, hopefully you are. You would. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, <laughs> you've probably learned some stuff, right? But you need a way to measure this. So feedback's key. So... With your, with, with your expectations, you shouldn't be projecting onto other people like, oh, that guy's only trained three months. I've been training a year. He's kicking my ass. Yeah, but maybe you don't know the dude. Maybe dude's ex-SAS or something. Like, maybe that person is a savage. Maybe she is an ex-professional Olympic gymnast and track cyclist <laughs> and has a mother who used to beat her with a cane. And that's why she's crushing your throat with her shin bone. Like, you need to really get on board that... Everybody in the gym is not created equal. Dave Goggins walks in, you're like, huh, who's that skinny guy over there? Yeah. I just ran 125 miles to be here. I ain't no bitch. <laughs> like, don't compete with that guy. It's not worth it. Change the expectation to be like, how can I get better this week? And how do I compare to a couple of weeks ago? I think shifting the focus from looking at others and expecting to be better than them is dumb and is absolutely a recipe for failure you're going to feel like a failure you got to get on board with like how have i improved on me and 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 just go to have fun like if you're going there to compete that expect that they say in buddhism expectation ruins experience don't go in expecting anything just go in i'm going to try and improve my jiu-jitsu today maybe that is even too much of a expectation oh i'm going to improve some days you don't improve some days you show up and you suck but the fact that you showed up has value and and your tolerance for sucking is important within that as well yeah and that's that's part of the improvement process isn't it Mm. right getting whatever like having a shit session getting getting negative getting critical feedback about okay fuck you know like it's it's part of it um the yeah like the expectation piece expect that it's going to be real hard but what i wanted to say was that like when you start jujitsu you tend to just compare yourself to all your training partners because you you know you're like oh i'm I go again. I like, and we, we do that even as you get further down the track. That guys are one stripe. I have no stripes. I swept him. Right. I should get uh, stripe. That's exactly right. Like it's very kind of binary at that st- at that early stage. And I think, yeah, like kind of what you're touching on is like breaking out of that mentality of being like, no, it doesn't matter. Cause some people are going to be training six days a week. Some people are going to be training once a week. Like when you, you're not in alignment with any one person. So just worry about you and, and control what you can. I remember having a conversation with a guy, real muscular dude. I don't know. He might have been overweight at some stage, but he was so strong and he was really jacked. Uh, He was too muscular to be natural. I was like, sounds like you had respect for this jacked gentleman. Well, he came at me really hard. Anyway, subsequently, I, it was no gi. I didn't know. I'd never met him before. I was like, this guy could be any belt, but clearly after beating the, crap out of him because he just kept going harder and harder every time i submit him this kind of guy goes Ugh! and like bangs the mat i'm like all right buddy cool well i mean i don't know you but you don't know me so you're going to be feeling a lot more of that next 10 minutes you're going to get it and at the end of the role i said to him oh man you know like usually i try and do this before but didn't get the chance how long have you been training four months three weeks and three days oh you better believe it i'm keeping track of every hour i was like Pfft. I don't care if you haven't trained more than a year. Shut the fuck up. Like I don't care. 
It's irrelevant. I've trained 15 years, dude. Trained my whole life. Like, that's nothing. You're a blip. We're all a blip, right? If I think about, I feel embarrassed, like having a conversation with Shanji. Like, I've trained 15 years. He's trained 30. <laughs> like, he's had his black belt as long as, longer than I've even, you know, he got his black belt in 2001 or 2000. It's like, holy shit, dude. You had your black belt longer than I've even done jujitsu. Like, so deep in the experience. The problem is when you're early, every little thing matters. But then the longer you do it, you realize these tiny little things are not so important. So you shouldn't be deciding if you're successful or a failure based off these little variables. Getting swept doesn't make you a failure. You know, like, but it's funny how you can just really, oh, I suck. Everyone sweeps me all the time. It's like, yeah, all right, let's just work on it. That's okay. You know, it's like, it's not personal. You're not a terrible person. You shouldn't judge yourself so harshly. Like, yeah, just... I guess work on it, improve that. And um, man, this idea, which is kind of hard to understand, is just, it doesn't mean you shouldn't care about jiu-jitsu. You should care, but you shouldn't internalize it. Like my failure at jiu-jitsu makes me as a failure as a person. And I think um, the gentleman who reached out to me is feeling like, because so much of, I think he really puts, even though he's only trained a short amount of time in the context of jiu-jitsu, he feels a failure. I think this sense of being stuck or feeling like you're a failure is, it can be hard to shake when you really care about jujitsu. For sure. Yeah, you hang your hat on, like that's who I am. Yeah. And that's your identity. And so then, yeah, you have an existential crisis mm. when all of a sudden you start to underperform. Yeah, who am I if I'm not a jujitsu guy? Yeah, I mean, there's the funny thing that I like to think about in that, because we all have those feelings. Sure. I, I have those feelings. Um, you know, often, right? But it's a, it's a conversation. You have the feeling and then you're like, hang on a second. The fuck is my monkey brain telling me? And you're like, I'm being a little bitch. It doesn't fucking matter. You know, yeah. the, the funny thing that I think about is, well, what if I just never went to jujitsu again? Yeah. Like what, would actual, like, what would actually happen? Would the narrative that I have about myself, like how would that change? It'd be like, well, I wouldn't have to deal with any of these negative feelings because I'm sure. no longer exposed to the whatever my technical inefficiencies, sure. uh, I'd still be a black belt or, mm. uh, you know, or a handy white belt or a blue belt, right? So I'd still be, I'd still consider myself, I'm really showing you the deep narrative in my head there here. I'd still consider myself a savage on the street, right? Sure. Compared to the rest of these motherfuckers. I'll, I'll double leg that account and walk so, across the street which, right And I, I find that just a funny thought, a thought sort of experiment because you're like, I'm choosing to go to this place and I place so much weight on the importance of what happens in this place but you're like what's it actually for am i trying to be the toughest cunt in my gym yeah or am i actually just trying to get better mm. and learn this skill set and jiu-jitsu is the vehicle for me to get better yeah so i i think you know I, that's that's kind of a thing that i bounce around with and then you're like it does, you know it, it uh, hopefully you can agree that you're just trying to be better and that jiu-jitsu is a vehicle and of course you want to get better at the skill set yeah and so then it's like well just keep going man but we all still want to be bad motherfuckers. Of course, you don't want to be <laughs> the weakest guy in the gym. No. Never. Never no. be that guy. I want to walk or into girl. a room and know that I'm the most dangerous person in the room. But you and just it, walk into a different room if you're not. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, That's what I'm saying. No, a certain dominate. When I'm down the cafe <laughs> and I see all those trendy bankers, I'm like, I want to know. <laughs> nah, I do think that way though. I'm like, whoa, that weight is kind of jacked. I ran into a, uh, a, a black belt... Um, uh, Alexandri, a guy that trained over at Advantage for a little while back okay. in the days, he's an Alliance black belt. Yep. And I ran into him the other day, and he wasn't trained that much back when when I saw him. But he was a he was a real motherfucker. To, you know, he was a tough guy tough to roll guy. with. And I ran into him. We were out one night for Dylan's Bucks play. I ran into him, and I'm like, "Bro, what are you doing?" He's, I'm like, "Training juice." He's like, "Ah, oh, not much, man." I was like, "What are you doing?" He's like, "I'm doing some boxing, actually." Ah. He said, "It's awesome, man. I love I'm being a beginner again." Oh, and nice. I'm like, "How funny, right?" Like, he's the big dog at the academy. Like, if he goes yeah. to jiu-jitsu. But if he goes to this other room, goes to the boxing just class, the he's just a fucking nobody who can't box. But that's cool. It, there is something to that. When I went to judo, I felt the same way. I mean, obviously, there's a lot more crossover between jiu-jitsu and judo, but it's, it's nice to sit at the end of the line because there's no expectation. Yeah. When you go from being at the front of the class where everyone's looking at you and there's that, I think there's a huge value in just not putting pressure on yourself and then no one really caring. Because it, it becomes more playful. And I think this is where we can circle into fun. You're doing it because you like it. 
man, if jiu-jitsu stops being fun, then, like, what are you doing it for, right? Like, yeah, there'll be days where it's a bit more of a punish, and so, yeah, we have to have this degree of stoic attitude or toughness or grit to deal with the hard stuff. But, and this is what I said, I was talking to uh, my my mate's son when I introduced him to jiu-jitsu. I said, dude, I just want you to do one class. If you do one class and you decide after that class, you don't like it, you don't want to do it, well, I'm not going to invest a whole lot of time and energy in making you come here. One, it costs money. Two, it takes time. And three, I'm sick of everyone calling me a sandbagger for being in the white belt class and bashing all the white belts. So that's on you, not on me. Um, but but goddamn, I had a good time. Oh, just <laughs> dialing on them white belts, bro. Jump guillotine's never been so fun. Do you even know what a guard is? <laughs> yeah. Um, no down elbows. I'm a black belt. Shut up. Um, no, it was, it was tough because I said, dude, this is hard. Jiu-jitsu is hard. If you don't find it enjoyable, you shouldn't, you know what I mean? Like it's, if you can't get on board with challenge and enjoy challenge, then it is definitely not for you. I, I used to think jujitsu was for everybody. I used to think that in the core of my being, everyone should train is great for everyone. But having spent a bit longer thinking about it, I don't think that's necessarily true because different people enjoy different things. And I think what got me started in jujitsu was the challenge but also the rush and the thrill of learning and just being able to do something completely different. It was so alien to my world. And I've never really lost that. And I feel whenever I learn a new technique, I'm like, dang, that shit's cool. It's cool, right? There's a novelty to it. Like, dang, I just learned magic. Yeah. I just learned martial arts fucking magic. I'm a fucking magician, bitch. I should have a fucking <laughs> jujitsu wand. Fucking, you know, like, no. Sorry, it's got a bit Harry Potter there. But, you know, like, it's true. Never seen it. Happy to make that declaration. <laughs> I've seen all of them at least 10 the times. The jocks out there. I fucking love that <laughs> shit. She's like, nerd squad. Fucking Harry Potter, am I right? Am I right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shout out Hermione. On, um, on, the, um, on that piece, I've had, I've had plenty of times where I haven't enjoyed it. Right. I've had plenty of periods where I'm like, I'm not enjoying jiu-jitsu. Mm. And it's usually, I think, like, when that happens on a very like acute like short-term thing like fuck i didn't enjoy training session yesterday or last couple of weeks of jits has really sucked i think like that's fine like that's really normal and it's often pointing to maybe you're continuing to make some mistakes or you're not addressing something that you should be addressing or you need to you need to ask better questions of your coach or something like that in order to overcome the thing but i think when you're finding that you're like chronically not enjoying it that's usually pointing to like probably something needs to change in your current training setup mm -hmm. and for me the points when i was enjoying it was one when i felt like I, there was too much pressure to compete yep and i was just going there because i felt like i had to and i had to compete and i didn't really want to um but also when i wasn't enjoying the particular gym that i was at yep and the vibe just wasn't on point i didn't feel valued i didn't feel like i was getting better and so i think um you know if, you, if you're having those feelings it's like take a step back and like look at what's going on because you can train jiu-jitsu anywhere. Mm. You know, you can make it what you want. You know, you can like, you could go to a gym that's, you know, if you want more challenge, you could go to a gym that's more competition heavy. Yeah. If you want less of a challenge, if you want to just cruise a bit more, be a bit more social about it, you could find that gym, you could find those classes. Yeah. You know, you could find the coach that's going to like, oh, I know what you're here for. I'm going to help you get that. Yeah. Versus the coach that's like everyone does, everyone fits my mold fucking get into my mold and you're like fuck it doesn't feel quite right yeah well i the, the other thing i'd say in just terms of just wrapping this up is do it quit find out what that feels like how does that feel do you miss it because i had a moment like with that with taekwondo many years ago where i couldn't do it for six months and it'd been my identity for i don't know almost 10 years it's just it was just everything you know every single day taekwondo taekwondo and then i i I couldn't train. I got sick and I couldn't train. And I was like, wow, do I want to go back? You know, it, it, I had this serious question. And I remember my first kind of session back, it was, it was a pretty light session, but I was like, oh, fuck, I really miss this, man. You know, and I think you, you, you can probably speak more strongly to this, Joe, is that idea of like, uh, you kind of did quit, but then yeah, you came back too, right? Like, yeah, it's never too late to come back. So if you, no, you can always come back right yeah yeah I, I quit and it was and you know i didn't 
I quit because I had competing obligations, right. which pulled me away very conveniently. Yeah. Where I was like, fuck, I started a gym. I got to be, at the, I got to do that thing. So I'm like, I can't, I'm just not getting to jits. I'm going to quit. Mm. I, I probably, if I didn't have that excuse of the gym, I don't know if I would have. It just would have been interesting to see how it plays out. Sure. Because of course, sunk cost biased. I was a brown belt, yeah. you know, and you also just feel this, you feel like you have to keep doing this thing. Mm. I got to keep going. I got to, I got to stay on this ship. Propulsion. For, yeah. For some reason. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, it was great for me. And then that, of course, I've like, spoken about in other episodes. That's where I met Adam. And that was kind of, you know, what, Christian. what got the, the love for the game back. Back on the path. That's right. But yeah, man, fuck. That's right. Take a break and, and see what's up. Or go check out some other gyms. That could be it, right? right? Just go fucking train some different places. It's not you. Have some different experiences. It's the gym. That's right. It's definitely the gym. <laughs> but uh, no, I think it's, it's a conflicting feeling because we, get, we do get so invested. We do care so much. And no one wants to be a quitter. But this is just some identity shit. That's not, that's not real. Like... There's actually times when it's good for you to stop doing something. It's like, I, I saw some shirt which is like Alcoholics Anonymous is for quitters or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like maybe that, maybe that behavior is bad for you and you should stop doing it. That's right. But you don't know until you kind of try. And, and I, I would like to think if you're a year in, then you're in it, but not necessarily. So... If you haven't done the analysis, if you haven't worked out why you're injured all the time, if you haven't had a look at your game, like maybe new people are picking it up quicker because maybe you need to change something in your game. There needs to be some analysis there. If you haven't asked some questions around why do I get so anxious or even gotten some feedback from your coach because a lot of people out there haven't even done a private lesson with their coach and that could be the key to just unlocking something in their game. I think you've got to ask more questions before you hit the red quit button. But then also I would put it out there and say, maybe you should quit BJJ and just see how that feels. Cause maybe that feels right. And maybe after a while you go, you know what? Fuck that. I'm going back. I need this in my life. But if you are going to do that, go lift weights for 18 months, eat a bunch of calories, get fucking hench, come back huge. and wreck everybody. <laughs> I want to add one thing to that, which Please. is it also depends on what, it is that you take away from jujitsu. And I think something that I come back to a lot is the ongoing daily challenge. It's a challenge of doing something hard and something that is often uncomfortable. And even at, at my level, it's still often hard and still often uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the discomfort is I don't want to go today. Like I've got heaps of work to do and I'm fucking super busy and I'm tired and it's like, I'm going to go. Yep. And then I come back and I'm like, fuck, I'm so glad I went. Yep. But I think about what my life would be like if I didn't have it. And I'm like, my life would probably be a lot easier, right? I'd just go to the gym where I could do my weights, control the shit. i go to work. Like, it's all right, but there's no struggle in that. Yeah. There's very little, like, there's not someone in my face. There's not someone that's forcing me to deal with certain facets of my, uh, of my like, spirit or even just my, like, my, of certain emotions, mm. right, that, that, that don't get expressed in these other environments. Yeah. So I'm like, in that way, it's kind of in a, in a, in a stoic side of mindset, no, that struggle is important. And for me, jiu-jitsu is largely a part of that. Seeking that adversity. Find it. Yes, sir. Thanks, fam. Thank you for listening. Hey, if you need help with strength and mobility, we got you. The Bulletproof for BJJ app is up and running. Uh, you can start a free trial. Go to bulletproofforbjj.com. Sign up, start training, and uh, we'll see you in there. Let's get hench. You.